Okay, so anyone who knows me at all knows that I am kind of into airships in the same way that the ocean is slightly moist. One of the things I've been working on is some solar-powered autonomous blimps, one of which I showed in a video a few months ago. It's rudimentary, it's just a prototype, but it works. Then, the FAA comes out with a rough draft of their new regulations for drone operation. Among other things, it requires drone operators maintain line of sight with the aircraft at all times. That hit me like a punch in the gut. There's no point to drones if you have to keep line of sight with it. That's the whole idea behind them. So you can send them out to do the jobs that people can't do. So the FAA's rough draft was extremely disappointing, to say the least. So I stopped working on my solar-powered blimps for a while, I took a break, worked on some other things like the Airship Pirate server, which is now in operation and lots of people get on there every day. Then, more recently, a few things happened. First, I started to hear rumors that the FAA may change their mind on the whole line of sight requirement. I've heard there may be an altitude limit or possibly a weight limit, both of which are a perfect fit for my solar-powered blimps which are, after all, lightweight and can operate at low altitudes if desired. Then, out of the blue, Dan Geary dropped me a message. So, Dan Geary is something of a legend in the RC airship community. He'd seen my first video on YouTube and he reached out to me. So I got to meet him, which was great, and we talked about the potential of these airships, how they can help with various problems society has these days, how we need to do more with less, and just all sorts of things. I also had the chance to bounce some ideas off of him, uh, some things to improve the design, uh, and I just kind of generally got all excited to get back into the swing of things as far as building these uh, airships goes. So, this past week I've been working hard on a new propulsion and control system for my next solar-powered blimp model, and that is this. So this is all custom fabricated using a number of different materials ranging from high density and low density foams, the molded plastic, where the motor is actually mounted, uh, as well as the struts connecting the whole thing to the blimp itself. Uh, they're both carbon fiber. Um, so you know, this is, uh, this is still a little rough, uh, it needs to be sanded, painted, uh, and that sort of thing, but it is ready for testing in a prototype system. Uh, everything basically works, uh, which I'll show you here in a moment. All right, so the first item of business is how much does it weigh? Uh, so I've made every effort to make this as lightweight as possible because I want to keep this uh, new airship as small as I can possibly get it and still have it do its job of being a truly long duration and autonomous uh, blimp drone. I'll be weighing the motor itself, the control assembly, and these carbon fiber rods which will be used to affix the whole assembly to the envelope. Alright, and the moment of truth. Okay, 76 grams. Wow! That is a lot less than the previous system. Uh, less than half. It might even be a third of the previous system. Now granted, this is without the, uh, this is without the cabling, uh, and that those wires will weigh a little bit. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is a significant improvement. All right, very nice. Okay, so next we're going to test the control assembly. Uh, the point of this assembly is to move the engine in whichever direction is necessary. It's a vectored thrust system, just like the last model, uh, but more compact uh, and with a much wider range of motion. So let's test that and make sure that it's working correctly. So let me just put it in this harness i created. I use this uh, uh, to secure it. Uh, so that it can move around. I also use this for uh, measuring thrust, which we'll do in a moment. Um, all right, I just got to get all these rubber bands on there. Okay, have to make sure it's reasonably secure. Um, yeah, all right, that should do it. All right, I've retrieved my receiver, uh, which is going to control the servos in the uh, control assembly. So now let me just hook these up, just have to get the polarity correct, and make sure I've got them in the right slot. I think we're good to go, let's give this a shot. 
All right, yeah, okay. I'm um, getting some motion. That's excellent. Let me just turn this so it doesn't get in the way. Uh, of course, on an actual uh, blimp envelope, uh, this would be at the aft section where it's not going to hit anything, but uh, it isn't right now. So yeah, okay, uh, there we go. Getting a full range of motion in just about every direction you could possibly want. Uh, these servos, by the way, they've been modified to rotate 180 degrees. Uh, they have a, a greater amount of throw than typical servos. All right, great. So that seems to be working fine. Uh, next, let me uh, disconnect this from the receiver and uh, get out my electrical scale once again, and we are going to measure the system's thrust output. So we'll put the scale underneath the whole thing. Uh, we're going to set the scale to zero with all of this loaded on top so that we can then measure the downward force exerted by the motor uh, on top of all of the weight that's already there. Just have to get everything hooked up. Uh, I, did, uh, I did label these to make sure that I put them in the right order because that is important. You don't want it trying to go backwards. That's bad. By the way, you may notice uh, that propeller on there, uh, it is a geared system, and the propeller is larger than you would typically have for this engine size, and that's intentional. So with propellers on the small scale, a major problem that you have is you lose a great deal of efficiency to turbulence. The first blade is spinning, and it makes the air very turbulent, uh, so that the second blade then has dirty air going over it, and is not very efficient. Because we have a limited amount of solar power available, uh, we want to minimize that efficiency loss as much as possible. So one way you do that is with a large propeller spinning relatively slowly. But it's, it's still pretty fast, as you'll see. Okay, I've now got it at half throttle, starting to get some significant torque off of it. Let's take it all the way. All right, according to my scales, I got 250 grams of thrust. So that's actually more or less what I expected. Uh, that's about what the uh, calculation said that I should have gotten. Um, although, uh, it's less efficient here because, uh, just going back to turbulence for a moment, turbulence is always your enemy, uh, and in this case, with this flat sheet I've got this motor on, uh, it is creating extra turbulence, whereas when it's mounted on an envelope, uh, it'll be much cleaner air that it's using. Um, so yeah, I can expect the thrust to be a little higher uh, in, the, in the field, uh, but in my test, uh, this is more than that. Alright, so I did some rudimentary range of motion uh, tests, although I couldn't take it very far because uh, with it mounted like this, uh, the propeller, I don't want it to get it, cut its own wires, uh, I need to get all of that cleared away. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's working great. I think this is going to work out well for me. Uh, I'm excited to get the rest of this together. And uh, next I'll be working on the power systems. Uh, that is the solar cells, the voltage regulators, and all that good stuff. Uh, and if there's uh, continued interest in these videos, I will be certain to keep you updated and show you how that goes. Um, I, I'm hoping that uh, you guys can kind of see what I'm doing in here, uh, the, the things that I'm working on, and maybe get as excited about them as I am, if that were possible. I'll, uh, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time.